All right, so I want to talk about food, sex, and drugs. Yeah. All right, so yeah. these, these things all have something in common, and that's that they cause the brain to release a chemical, a neurotransmitter. It's called dopamine. Now, because people think of food, sex, and drugs as being generally pleasurable, uh, dopamine was regarded as a pleasure chemical, you know, that makes you feel good. And, uh, yeah, food, sex, and drugs, there we go. Uh, so, this aligned very well with common ideas about addiction, uh, namely that uh, drugs make you feel good and people want to feel good. So addicts were people who chose to do drugs in order to feel good. So it was kind of a moral choice. Uh, so things seemed pretty simple. Uh, uh, drugs made you feel good and uh, addicts chose to do drugs to feel good and dopamine was a pleasure chemical. But the more research that came out, the clearer it became that dopamine is not just a pleasure chemical, and its real role is actually a lot more interesting. So, uh, one finding, <laughs> science, yes. So one finding was that the anticipation of a reward, like food, actually releases more dopamine than the reward itself, eating the food. Uh, another finding was that Dopamine is not just associated with things we find pleasurable, but sometimes also with things that we dislike, like uh, pain or fear or danger. Uh, one study, uh, for instance, uh, found that monkeys' brains release dopamine when you shoot puffs of air at their eyeballs, which they <laughs> understandably don't like very much. Uh, so, so if it's not about uh, pleasure, then what is it about? And the leading theory is that it's about salience. Now, that's just a fancy word for uh, relevance or how important something is to pay attention to. So it's, it's really all about attention. The more dopamine something releases in your brain, the more your brain is going to focus your attention on it. And because of this, uh, it means that it suggests that dopamine is involved in all sorts of stuff we do. Learning, memory, emotion, motivation, decision making. And I want to talk about decision making in particular. So when I say decisions, you probably think of conscious, logical, rational types of decisions. And these happen in the prefrontal cortex, uh, part of the brain in the front, that some people think is what uh, kind of separates humans from other animals. But dopamine is produced in the midbrain and in interacts with the limbic system. These are regions of the brain that are so old they evolved before humans and, or, sorry, before mammals and reptiles split. So how do these things fit together? Well, it turns out that dopamine helps focus our attention on the most salient, most relevant factors when we're making a decision, and it helps give us our gut feelings. So even when we think we're you know, logically weighing all the options, uh, our brain is using dopamine behind the scenes to kind of uh, stack the deck and skew the outcome. But uh, why would it do this? Um, it turns out it does this because it actually improves our decision-making skills. Uh, our prefrontal cortex is really easily overwhelmed, so it kind of dumps things down for us. And this actually gives us a, uh, a new model of addiction. Uh, basically, when you do a drug, it floods your brain with dopamine. And that trains your brain to pay more attention to it in the future. So the next time your mind's wandering, you're just a little more likely <laughs> to, to think about the drug. And when you do, your prefrontal cortex is just a little less likely to think about the reasons not to do the drug. So the net effect, you're more likely to take the drug again, release more dopamine, and, it, uh, and it, it, it's kind of a cycle. Uh, so uh, you might wonder then, why doesn't everyone who uses a drug become addicted. And uh, the picture here is people have different levels of sensitivity to dopamine. So people who have a high sensitivity, drugs can actually make them feel anxious, nervous, and it, it trains their brain to actually avoid the drug. And uh, so this, this all has uh, obvious implications in the field of studying addiction, but I kind of want to uh, explain why it's relevant to everyone here. And that's that the study of dopamine is really giving us a new understanding of how the brain works. And if we understand how something works, we can hack it. 
<laughs> so, so a better understanding of dopamine in the brain is, is you know, it could allow us to uh, make better decisions, learn, teach more effectively, uh, understand our own behavior, and who knows what else. Okay, thank you. This is my. Uh,